butts are a lot stronger than I expected. And I'll show you how other joints like the rabbit, miter, dovetail, and box joint compare so you can stop that little voice in your head from asking, is this strong enough? Oh, and if you think the dovetail is the be-all end-all, then you might be surprised. Previously, I showed my incompetence by failing to break a simple butt joint, so I headed down to the promised land, crossed the border with a trunk full of joints, and visited my friend Suman, who I like to take advantage of. He helped me devise a way so I can successfully break butts. What kind of butt did you think I was talking about? Now I know why you're all here, the dovetail. It's so ubiquitous that even most furniture savvy non-woodworkers know what they are, but I'll have you know, if you think the dovetail is the strongest, think again. Because of the way the angled tails capture the pins of the mating board, it prevents the mating piece from coming apart in this direction. This is a great example of what's called mechanical advantage, and it's the main argument people use to promote the use of dovetails. There's no doubt that dovetails add that 15th piece of flair to your furniture. However, dovetails are definitely the slowest joint to make out of all the joints that you'll see in this video. You can either go all hand tools, all power tools, or somewhere in between. For the five joints that I made for this video, I chose to use my Lee router jig, which is quite possibly the bougiest jig to come out of the 90s, router can do everything craze. And this allowed me to make super repeatable, tight dovetails after about a fortnight of dialing the jig in. If I tried to cut these by hand, it probably would have taken me an entire fortnight. Wait a minute. So the nagging voice in the back of your mind asks, can its strength match its reputation? The dovetail scored 1,808 pounds of force on average. The pattern of failure is the exact same on each one of my test joints. You can see that on the tail, the wood grain failed as if you drew a straight line from the inside of each tail, which makes it suspiciously end up looking like a box joint. So in this case, the glue was stronger than the wood itself. So if the glue is stronger, then why is mechanical advantage so awesome, you ask? Well, this argument kind of goes hand in hand with the idea that glue will eventually and inevitably fail. Back in the day when hide glue, which was made from crushed up animals, was your only option, yeah, that glue kind of sucks and it doesn't last forever. So it was a good idea to use a joint like the dovetail. But now we have modern PVA glues that over the past 75 years haven't given us much reason to believe that they'll fail as long as a piece of furniture isn't left out in the rain. And just to be clear, we're talking timelines that far exceed our lifetimes. But wait, they argue that high glue should be used when you want things to come apart in the future. If some nerd a hundred years from now wants to repair a drawer that I've made, then good friggin' luck because I ain't using high glue. Since the box joint doesn't have the same geometry that can fail in a dovetail, can it actually be stronger? If you're in the camp that I was in who believed that wood glue is stronger than the wood itself, then it seems logical that a box joint would in fact be stronger than a dovetail, even though a box joint doesn't have any mechanical advantage. The nice thing about box joints is that they're much easier to cut than a dovetail. You only need one setup at either the table saw or the router table to achieve both sides of the joint. And albeit repetitive, it goes much faster and it's pretty easy to achieve a tight fit. And I'm gonna stop and put a big ol' asterisk on tight fit and I'll circle back to that in a minute because um, let's just say that there's definitely an issue with many drawers that I've paid in the past. Oh, stop your whining. More important than in joinery or in woodworking in general, finding a good fit can really be a challenge when it comes to finding a therapist. And I'm glad to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is an important mission because finding a therapist can be really hard, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, 
BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist, and if it doesn't seem like a good fit, then you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance or who's in your network or anything like that. Regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or if you're just a human who lives in this world who's going through a hard time, therapy can give you tools to approach your life in a very different way. I saw a therapist when I was a teenager and it had a big impact on the way I learned to communicate my feelings with the people closest to me. So consider online therapy with BetterHelp by clicking the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash scoutwalsh to get 10% off your first month. Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. The thing about the box joint and all the joints we're gonna talk about today is that they're all joints used in specific orientations when sticking two pieces of wood together like this. Not like this or this or even this. I've covered some of the other joinery situations in other videos, but all the joints in this video, like the dovetail and the box joint, are gonna be used for making things like boxes, wall hung cases, or drawers. It would be much easier for me to break each of these like I did before by putting force under the end and essentially just rotating it apart. But when it comes to the stress that these types of joints are typically exposed to, like opening a drawer, it's more enlightening to just pull this joint straight apart so our welded structure that we made prevents the joints from rotating, which is also why it took so much more force to break these joints. So the box joint, is it a low effort dovetail that's actually stronger? Nope. This was basically the biggest disappointment of my entire life. Because before this, I fully believed that box joints were actually going to be way stronger than dovetails. The box joint, unfortunately, scored 754 pounds. But it gets worse. The butt joint that you saw at the beginning, it scored 1303 pounds. How could the box joint not only be worse than a dovetail, but be so much worse than a simple butt joint? Well, remember that asterisk from a couple of minutes ago? Yeah, that one. I think that the fit had something to do with it. I make my box joints reasonably tight, but not so tight that I can't simply push them together. What I think happened is that most of the glue was pushed out of the joint as it went together. This is what's known as a glue-starved joint. So does that make these numbers completely invalid? Well, the box joint was just about as tight as the dovetail, so the dovetail was probably glue-starved as well. But in that case, the glue didn't fail, the wood failed, and was overall stronger because of mechanical advantage. Now on all the joints on this test, I used a fresh bottle of Type Bond 3. The glue was spread liberally on every single baiting surface and on both sides of the joint, and the joints I'm testing were made about four months ago. The hysterical part of all this is that I've made dozens of drawers using box joints over the years, all of which are likely glue starved because I tend to aim for the same tight fit every time. Has anything gone wrong? Nope. Does this make me worried? Nope. But maybe there's something faster and stronger. Foreshadowing. Likely one of the first joints you'll make after graduating from simply screwing or nailing two boards together is the rabbit. It's an all-around easy joint, but prior to the test, I thought it was barely better than a butt joint. But as you'll see, I was very much mistaken. So why didn't I think that the rabbit isn't much better than a butt joint? Well, because it seemingly is kind of a butt joint. Since a butt joint is just some end grain right here glued to some long grain right here, a rabbit, well, it's just some end grain right here, glued to some long grain right here, and some end grain right here, glued to some long grain right here. And it has about 50% more surface area than a regular butt joint. So is the rabbit 50% stronger? <laughs> Notice that almost none of the wood failed in these rabbits. It was almost all glue failure. Take a mental note of this and I'll circle back to it in a minute. Coming in at an average of 2,118 pounds, the rabbit is actually over 60% stronger than a butt joint. And even more interestingly, 17% stronger than a dovetail. Not too shabby for a joint without any mechanical advantage. Hey 
Hey now, wait a minute. Can't you add mechanical advantage to basically any joint and make it stronger? Yeah, you can add dowels to rabbits, but is it really a good idea? The great thing about a rabbit is that it's pretty easy to reinforce, and I added three dowels to each joint. If you're not too concerned with looks and speed is of the essence, I just go freehand with the drill. Combining rabbits with dowels is exactly what I do for easy shop drawers, and you see me do it for my workbench. And if you're short on your 15 pieces of flair, then you can use a contrasting wood too. So the dowels make rabbits look pretty cool, and the little voice in your head seems to think that it must be stronger. Right? Ah, uh, it actually scored over 30% weaker than the regular rabbit without reinforcement, averaging at 1,462 pounds. What is going on here? Well, drilling holes through the joint kind of lessens the joint surface area a bit, and the dowels might create additional stresses that weren't there before as pressure is put on the joint. At least this is what I'm thinking is going on. As you can see, the entire joint basically exploded and it's quite consistent over all five joints, except for maybe the fifth one here. This is a very different picture than the regular rabbit, which broke very cleanly. You see, a joint that fails will not always fail at the glue line. There are weaknesses around the joint that can fail before the glue fails, which I think is one of the number one points of confusion that I've seen in the comment sections in other joint strength testing videos that I've made before. Just because the wood fails before the glue, it doesn't make the test invalid, it's just simply where the joint is inherently weak in its design. This is also why I'm breaking five of each joint and removing the strongest and weakest values to remove any outliers, and then when I average out the middle three results, I have a clear picture of the average strength. The miter seems rather inoffensive. It's clean, modern looking, but similar to the rabbit, isn't it just kind of like a butt joint? Similar to the rabbit, will it also blow our expectations away? If you ask most woodworkers and the little voice inside your head, they'll probably tell you that miters are probably not that strong. This was also pretty much my opinion before this test, because the 45 degree face also just kind of looks like a bunch of end grain. So isn't it kind of just like a pretty butt joint? Boy, was I wrong or what? The miter averaged 2,646 pounds. Yikes. That's almost 50% stronger than the dovetail and over twice as strong as the butt joint. So clearly a miter isn't just a bunch of end grain and is worth so much more than people give it credit for. And note that each joint broke perfectly at the glue line, meaning that there was no wood failure. Now, just like the rabbit, the miter can also be reinforced in a few ways, but first I wanna emphasize that the testing I'm doing is not even close to being exhaustive. In fact, it's quite crude and should be taken with a grain of salt because it does not count for one major aspect longevity. Now I have complete faith in modern PVA glues, but some of these joints are more susceptible to wood movement due to changes in humidity throughout the year. In particular, our super strong miter. As wood cycles between dry and humid air, its dimensions will change. In essence, this is like someone wiggling this joint back and forth over and over again throughout the years. So if the miter is so strong already, is there any need to reinforce it? Or just like the rabbit, does reinforcing a miter actually make it weaker? One way to reinforce a miter is to use a dowel jig or dominoes, but none of the joints in this video require a domino or a dowel jig, so I'm not starting now. All of the joints in this video can be done with a table saw or a router table. A slightly less common way to reinforce a miter is to add a long spline in mating grooves cut into the interior faces of a miter. The nice thing about these types of splines is that they make glue ups easier because the miter just kind of lines itself up. That little nagging voice seems to think that it must be stronger than a plain old miter, right? Yeah, no. 
this style of reinforced miter spline was pretty disappointing at 1,662 pounds, quite a bit weaker than the regular miter. You can see how every single one of these joints broke in the exact same way where the grain around the spline failed with the spline itself remaining intact. But wait, I can hear you typing already. There is a better way to reinforce miters. Yeah, the more common way to do this is to wait until your miters are dry, then cut slots through the corners, which you then glue in some splines that act sort of like stitches between the two parts. It's pretty easy, but it is a whole separate step from creating the miter, so overall, it does add a bit of time. As a side note, if that nagging voice in your head is wondering how long you need to leave clamps on a joint until the glue dries, my buddy Simon, who will help me with this test, is releasing a video today testing the strength of the glue over a short period of time so you can take off those clamps sooner. Maybe. Go watch the video. So, can these reinforced miters be stronger than the other one? Well, it doesn't seem like the grain can split in the same way, so perhaps they're even stronger than a regular miter. <laughs> Holy moly, those were loud! And you can see that although the spline kind of just pulled straight out of its slot, the wood didn't fail anywhere. And besides the enigma that was the box joint, all the joints where the wood didn't fail and the glue failed scored better than the ones where the wood failed. So it kind of seems like the glue line is in fact stronger than the wood itself. How does that theory hold up over a long period of time? It's hard to say. Oh, and how did this joint score? 2700 and 57 pounds. Bonkers. And that's the strongest joint out of all of these joints, including the dovetail. This miter might be the mightiest of them all, but I have made the weakest joint, the box joint, dozens of times, and they have been abused for years and they're still holding up fine. These tests are just that, tests. And they're entertaining to watch, but they're not to be taken as black and white recommendations on my part. So go and make all of these joints in this video, have fun doing it, figure out what you like best, and put an end to that nagging voice, asking if any of these joints are strong enough. Oh, time to remake all these drawers.